If you have your Bible, let's go together. Uh, we do not have this verse for the screen, but if you have your Bible, would you open it together with me to Isaiah chapter 22 verse 21. Isaiah 22 verse 21. I want to speak today about keys to breakthrough and then we're going to have communion. Keys to breakthrough or you can call it the key of David. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 21. I will dress him in your royal robes and will give him your title and your authority. He will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. Verse 22. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens, the do when he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. He will bring honor to his family name. For I will drive him firmly in the place like a nail in the wall. He will give him great responsibility and he will bring honor even to the lowliest members of his family. We see eventually in book of Revelation where the reference is made to this verse that I will give him the key of David. He will open, nobody will close and whatever he will close, nobody will open. I want to make a reference today in this message, three chapters of the first of Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 13, Chronicles chapter 14, and Chronicles chapter 15. These three chapters show in the life of David, I genuinely believe three keys that could help us unlock certain doors in our life. I would call them the keys to breakthrough or the keys of David. Chronicles chapter 13 deals with God's outbreak against Uzzah. Chronicles chapter 14 deals with David's victory over Philistines and the battle that he eventually had when God told him to wait. Don't go fight them. Wait until I move ahead of you. You're going to hear the sound of me walking on the trees. Then you go. And then Chronicles chapter 15 deals when David took the ark and he brought the ark into Jerusalem, into his royal city. And he was dancing and doing all of the uh, crazy charismatic things and his wife didn't like it that's chapter 15 and so um, I'm just gonna dive right into it I believe that the first key is the key of holiness is the key of holiness it deals with first chronicles chapter 13 and my uh, word on that is don't put the ark on the cart don't put the ark on the cart David what he does is he takes the ark of God from this uh, this family that has had this ark for a very long time and decides to bring it to his city chronicles chapter 13 and philistines long time ago when they captured the ark they did not know how to carry the ark in a better way the way they carry their gods is they would put oxen tie oxen to a cart and put their gods on the cart and so they did exactly the same thing with the ark is they put the ark of God on a new cart and they had the you know the, the cows go and deliver the ark to Israel and Israel ever since then adopted the same kind of a methodology of how to transport the ark of God so this time already Saul is gone so probably a hundred years or so David has become a king and David decides to bring the ark and instead of taking the ark as God commanded that the priest should carry the poles of the ark on their shoulders David built a brand new card and puts the ark on the card and have the oxen carry the ark and as they do everything is fine until oxen stumble and Uzzah who was one of the sons of the guy who had the ark in his house the other son was helping in the front Uzzah is helping in the back and Uzzah is reaching out to help the ark from falling off the cart and as he does that the Bible says the Lord broke out against Uzzah and Uzzah died it's very interesting the exact word is used in next chapter when Israel goes to war against Philistines and it says the Lord broke out against the Philistines. See before you experience a breakout you'll experience a breakdown. But the breakdown is God who is mad against the devil is equally mad against sin. See we love God's passion and indignation against devils and demons but we must understand 
is sin is devil's cousin sin is devil's child and God does not like sin God hates sin and God hates the devil God breaks out against the wrong worship or the wrong transport of his presence and the same way God breaks out against the Philistines the first key that I could I believe will unlock most of the doors in our life is the key of repentance is the key of holiness is is not mixing God and sin in one little pie believing that if I put Jesus on the top of my mess and the top of my sin I magically get blessed many times we are free from the Philistines grip but not from their influence it was Philistines idea to create the card now they don't know better but Israelites knew it better that that's not how you worship God that's not how you transport the ark of God see the world does not know better they're not Christians they're not they don't have an allegiance to the scriptures they don't have an allegiance to the Holy Spirit so for the world when it comes to dating when it comes to marriage you know you have to test the car before you buy it, it means you have to live with someone before you marry them that's the normal and you should never be surprised when the world does worldly things that you should that should never be shock you if I love something it makes it right for me whether it's homosexual whether it's other relationships because for the world what the rule is love and if I love the horse it means I can marry the horse if I love the laptop I can marry the laptop in California somebody is going to Supreme Court to marry their laptop I don't blame them because why can a man marry a man and a man cannot marry a laptop in the world love is God if you love it it makes it right and I don't blame the world for being worldly Philistines created a car to drive the presence of God that's Philistines but see when that creeps in into Israel and Israel does it generation after generation and it's interesting God is silent about it until oxen stumble Uzzah dies see the problem with many of us sometimes us not you us is the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 it says first one it says present your bodies and then it says do not conform to the world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that means that transformation in my life the door of transformation is waiting to be unlocked by the key of do not be conformed now I know 50 years ago that meant do not use makeup do not clap do not use other instruments than organ and wear long dresses and do not go to a movie theater being worldly 50 years ago man you know if you wear earrings if you wear eyelashes it means you are conformed to the world but God deals with more than just the physical appearance God deals with the lifestyle and certain habits and methods that we many times borrow from the Philistines and we put Jesus cherry on the top of our card and expect God's blessing on our life for many people it's the it's the idea of <coughs> that we live like the world but on Sunday we go to church there's a Jesus on the top of my card and therefore God is gonna bless me but that is not you're not gonna experience breakthrough because God and sin cannot be friends in your life the Bible says he who is the friend of God has to be an enemy with the world the enemy of the world does not mean you go around burning trees burning parks the world is not the, the nature it's not the streets the highways the world is not the people the world it's the way the people outside of the covenant with God the way they live the way they raise their children the way they treat their spouse the way they treat their hurt feelings the way they treat the presidents that they don't like the way they treat their debt the way they treat their finances their employer the way they treat their mouth and their attitude it's a lifestyle that they that they just simply they build a card of a certain lifestyle certain mindset certain method and many times what has happened in the world we come to church when you get saved when I get saved we come to church we bring the card with us that our family has passed on to us and then we put Jesus on the top of the card and it works until 
your oxen stumble until you stumble and typically when oxen stumbles they just stumble but in this case Uzzah dies and you see people come to church sometimes maybe you found yourself coming to church coming to the kingdom of God and you recognize that you have since you start coming um, Uzzah died maybe a particular relationship or a particular thing with your finance so particularly you said I thought that this is I come to God and God's just gonna take care of my, all of my problems and God wants to help us to have breakthrough but we must understand this secret God wants to be on your shoulders he doesn't want to be carried on the sin in our life some of us may say well Vlad you know Jesus took care of the sin on the cross and God is a good God I reject everything you're saying I understand where you're coming from I grew up in a more in a more um, God sinners in the hands of angry God kind of a Christianity I grew up uh, in the people and this did not mean they did not mean well, bad they just simply they've experienced how God is severe against sin and sometimes in being severe against sin they combine sin and sinner together and they were just severe even against people and uh, and those of you who know me from a uh, long ago you would always find out that in my messages even if you go on the YouTube you find out there was this always this uh, this uh, this thing would come out and I tried my best for it not to come out but it always came out that the, the God hates the sin and the sinner until years ago this revelation of the scripture that we all know that God so loved the world the mess in the world, the, the struggle, and God so loved and the verse in, in Romans I think chapter, uh, I forgot which chapter is where it says that through abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness we reign in life. Those verses in a, uh, in a metro in Kiev, those two verses literally were like explosives in my heart. It blew me out. The point I saw the goodness and the love of God almost like I got born again, again. I started to understand the love and the goodness of God but that does not you have to understand God's love and goodness doesn't make God unholy we have this idea like one kid was reading the Bible and he said God did God get saved in the New Testament because the Old Testament he's so mean kills everybody and then you get to the New Testament you see God got saved along with the rest of us He's so nice. He's so kind. He loves the children. He doesn't want to hurt people. He tells people don't go killing around but in the Old Testament he did the opposite and we have this idea. Sounds kind of weird that in the New Testament God got a version two of himself. Kind of nicer. Cut the edges around a little bit you know more presentable. No, 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 no. Cross didn't change God. Cross revealed him. If there will be no anger towards sin, there will be no need for Jesus to die. If God would change, he would change for Jesus, not for us. When Jesus had a sin on his life and said, Father, you've forsaken me. I've never done anything wrong, but the sin of these people on me. You turn your back against me, please. If God would ever change, it would be for him. But he didn't cross did not make God nice God was always love and that's why he provided the cross but God was always holy that's why there was a need for the cross can somebody say amen and so we must understand the deception of sin is that I can combine sin and I'm now again I'm not referring to sin you're fighting sin you're praying for to be free from you're you're struggling I'm talking about a lifestyle you condone a lifestyle that is contrary to the scriptures but you justify that that kind of a thing in your heart you know that this is the Lord's convicting you it's according to the scriptures your mom has been telling you telling you about it some of your leaders been coming and say hey come on we, we got we got to help to get out of this issue that you are in and you keep endorsing the deception of that is that I tithe I pray I go to church so what that the ark is on the cart God is pleased with me because look at you my life is better than yours that's a deception the sin is very deceiving sin is very deceiving it's like these two sisters went to shop in in Mexico across the border from California and as they went to and they they were shopping for clothes they bought some clothes and as they were walking by they saw in this little 
puddle of water um, this abandoned small little chihuahua so compassion you know we're Americans we're more compassionate for the animals than probably people from other countries so she, they quickly took this little chihuahua hid it in the trunk covered it so the border patrol wouldn't see it and they got through America they took the chihuahua you know into their house the chihuahua was shaking and shivering and and they decided to take the chihuahua with them into the bed because you know to keep it keep it warm the next day they took the chihuahua to a vet uh, hospital to say hey could you check this it seems like this chihuahua is very sick the doctor uh the pet doctor asked him where did you get this chihuahua they said well we went in Mexico he said you know it's a Mexican river rat it's not a chihuahua but it looked like chihuahua it barked like chihuahua we liked it like we like a chihuahua and that's exactly how many times we treat sin we see something we like it we're like this is good it feels good it makes me feel good everybody else is doing it and we bring it we clothe it and everything and God comes in and says listen that's not a dog that's a rat and you gotta throw it away can somebody say amen I really want to just encourage you with one thing today guys do not wait for your oxen to stumble for you to kill the card do not wait for things to start going crazy for you to remove the sin out of your life many people wait until sin catches up with them for them to start dealing with the sin and as long as everything is fine see God does not want you to wake up to him when you get a trouble in your life God wants you to wake up to righteousness and holiness when he speaks there were many people in the Bible like city of Nineveh. Jonah comes and says, hey guys, in three days you're going to perish. Somehow a Ninevite did not see fire coming from heaven. They didn't see another army attacking them. But somehow conviction of God came in and they said, we're not going to wait three days and see if we get destroyed to call on God. We're calling on God right now. And the Bible says they repented and God postponed the judgment. Same thing happened to Ahab. Elisha comes to Ahab and says, listen, you took the vineyard from this man of God. You killed him. Your wife has fabricated a story about him that he cursed God and you. And now you're enjoying that vineyard. He said, you're a dead man. In this vineyard, he says, dogs will lick your blood. He says, you, you're finished. And Elijah walks off mad. Ahab, instead of executing Elijah, goes to his house. He starts crying to God, says, God have mercy. Why? Because he gets convicted by the word from God. Not by the trouble, by the word from God. And something happens. God tells Elijah, look, Ahab humbled himself. He says, I will postpone the judgment. And the worst king of Israel, God still had mercy. He did not wait until everything bottom fell off under his feet to start bringing his sin to God and repenting. The best way to repent is before you get caught people who say well once I get caught like prodigal son and eat with the pigs and my life is shattered then I will really repent learn from David when everything went wrong it was a died David didn't repent David says I don't want to have the ark of God in my life most of us when we mix Christianity and sin and it catches up to us something happens we actually get distant from God not closer we think God is the problem instead of sin because of deception of the devil deception of our sin I found out this in marriage and I know this about Christian life one small secret if you live a life of repentance God will always be gracious to you if you ever reach that point where you think you're above repentance the Bible says we need to repent to get into the kingdom of God and as we continue a life of repentance means changing our mind we grow in the kingdom of God if you get married you will know this thing people don't fall out of love they only fall out of repentance for many people it's like a house you know the, the spouse or something is wrong in their relationship and they quickly go changing a spouse that's like me changing a house because a light bulb went out no you change the light bulb not the house and so you change your heart you repent and when you live a life of repentance now there, there are exclusive situations where I'm not referring to every situation but for most of us here today in our finances in our family in our walk with God if you don't fall out of repentance you will not fall out of breakthrough 
and David was the king God was pleased with him but in this area David wasn't right and we see in chapter uh, in chapter 15 David says guys what we did was wrong now we're gonna change we're gonna bring back the ark and so as a Christian as a pastor as a leader you have to and I have to learn one thing if you want to grow you gotta repent repentance is not always coming to the front and crying big big tears repentance is realizing man this is not right and I'm gonna change it through the grace of God in Jesus name can somebody say amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ the second key is the Holy Spirit in chapter 14 David goes against the Philistines and he inquired of the Lord and the Lord said go Philistines came again and David inquired of the Lord I love that about David he did not go on the basis of assumption of the previous victory he said God do you want me to go and God says uh no this time I don't want you to just go I want you to wait I want I, I want you to go around and you're gonna hear the sound and when you hear the sound this particular sound he says no I have went ahead of you I am involved and then you shall go I believe this speaks of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is like the wind of God and then when God came and broke through the enemy David says God broke through like the water and Jesus says in John chapter 7 he says that those who believe in him that they will have the Holy Spirit and it will be like a water flowing out of their innermost we see that in in one of the prophets that God says when the enemy comes in the proper translation says the spirit like a flood will raise a banner against him and he will conquer him the Holy Spirit wants to be the strength inside of you to overcome sin and to overcome the devil the Holy Spirit but there is a key there's a very simple and very awesome key here is that before you work with Holy Spirit you have to learn to develop a habit to wait on the Holy Spirit to wait on the Holy Spirit now waiting on the Holy Spirit is that when you have set your time during your prayer time during your devotion time where you calm your mind you calm your soul and you just lay yourself your soul before the Holy Spirit and wait on him the Bible says those who wait upon the Lord they'll renew their strength when Jesus told the disciples about the Holy Spirit he says the first thing he says wait for the Holy Spirit he didn't just say go work with Holy Spirit, go fight with the Holy Spirit, but wait about the Holy Spirit and He will come in. There is a part that we as Christians have to learn is we have to learn how to wait and we have to learn how to fight. When we go in fighting without waiting, we're just running on our own. And when we wait, 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 wait and don't ever act with the Holy Spirit, we end up like that person on a traffic light who the green light came up and it's been a minute and they're still waiting for a confirmation of the secretary of transportation to give them a sign from the government that they can go it's just kind of awkward just kind of weird God wants us to wait and God wants us to act God told Joshua when you're gonna enter the promised land the first city Jericho walk seven times seven days and don't say a word be silent seven days of silence and then on the last day on the seventh day on the seventh time as you're gonna pass the city open your mouth and shout seven minutes of shouting after seven days of silence for many of us it's the opposite we shout for seven days we recognize it doesn't work we're like okay let me find out what God really wants to do here God wants us to live a life where we learn in silence and I understand for some of you this is strange you're like Vlad you need this message yourself because the only thing you do when you get up is you scream that's here I don't do that in prayer when I'm alone with God or before the service when I sneak in into the room I don't shout I listen so when I get up I can scream and I can shout why because there's a time to wait and there's a time to war but see your war is empowered by your weight as you wait on the Holy Spirit as you set yourself before God whether it's in your devotion time and you say Holy Spirit so much trouble is going on but I just rest and I just wait I silence myself the Bible says Jesus was silent before his accusers but then when he opened up his mouth on the cross and he cried out the Bible says that the veil was torn apart the reason why many times our cry is weak is because it's not been preceded by the silence 
when you take time to silence yourself before God when you take time and it's not just your mouth because you can silence your mouth and your thoughts but silence your thoughts and David says like a wind child my soul is within me a quiet soul when you quiet your soul something begins to happen the Lord then begins to empower your shout begins to empower your prayer can somebody say amen the third key and that is worship when David worshiped and that we see in chapter 13 of Chronicles in chapter 14 we see that him fighting against Philistines chapter 13 we see Uzzah dying and them learning a lesson in chapter 15 we see David taking the ark now on the priest's shoulders and David begins to worship he begins to actually more correct way David begins to praise David begins to go and starts to dance he uses priestly garments some people said he danced naked that's not in the bible it just says he removed the kingly robes and he used the, the the simple clothing that the priests wore and he started to dance like a child like almost like a priest before God David wasn't a king he saw himself as his child he saw himself as as one of everyone else of God's children and his wife Micah who had a theolo theological degree in craziness she was sitting on the window and she wasn't a worshiper she was a window watcher there's a calling like that that exists in hell window watcher satan hires everyone who doesn't want to worship says hey i'm going to give you a calling in the church it's called a window watcher watch and criticize that's exactly what she did she's sitting there and you know what she was offended by she sits there and she got so furious why you're a king and you're acting like a foolish child she said she says I'm embarrassed for you how dare you do that you worship God that's not worship that's a childish thing that's foolishness she said it's interesting because in that phrase the Bible doesn't refer to her as David's wife it refers to her as Saul's daughter because she wasn't reflecting the worshiper she was reflecting a people pleaser who was her father see when you worship or don't worship this is where you really show whose nature is operating in your life the husband Jesus or devil the father or pleasing people pleasing or just just that that thing where we we get so caught up in the dignity of us instead of the divinity of God see David was worshiping the divinity Micah was worshiping her dignity because for her it was more important how I look than how God feels I know nobody here has this problem we're going to talk about the people who are outside of our church right now but how many times even during our worship experience though I do not believe that worship is only what happens on Sunday morning first 35 minutes but how many times even when the camera is placed on people you know I close my eyes during worship for a few reasons I don't want to lose my worship because of how other people are not worshiping he put the camera on people and I was like Lord Jesus I thought everybody you sense that presence of God and you're like man the glory of God is here until you see how a person is standing like literally they've never been in a building before never seen people before and the weird part is it's the people that are Christians it's not, not new guests you see new guests come in who don't even know Jesus and they listen to the words and they understand the words are there for a reason to sing them out they sing them out they, they try to even join in say I don't understand fully but I join in and you see many times Christians and you're like how could you do that being washed by the blood being filled by the Holy Spirit why do you care about how your face is and how God's heart is at the moment I understand there's Slavic people here maybe Hispanic and others maybe you grew up in the churches where expressing your worship was wrong I had grew up like that where raising your hands during singing was discouraged shouting was prohibited other instruments than piano and a guitar was seen as being the worldly and people were obsessing with the way we express our worship instead of who we worship and that's what Micah was doing she wasn't against worship if you would ask Micah so do you hate worship she says I love worship I just hate the way David does it I love worship I just hate the way hungry generation does it loud why on Sunday morning four people jumping up and down which 
God are they worshiping because my God he's offended by that I wonder which God are you talking about now because the God of David somehow didn't curse David for being expressive but locked Micah's womb whose God am I worshiping because the God of Jesus when kids Jesus Hosanna Hosanna and the Pharisees the dignified ones say Jesus quiet them down tell them to shut up and Jesus says I can't do that if they are silent rocks are gonna have to take their place I want to tell you something today I don't want no rock in Tri-City or this building to take my place I am the worshiper and God will hear worship from my mouth can somebody say amen my hands used to steal but now the Bible says without wrath we lift our hands to God and worship him my feet used to walk in the wrong paths but now they feet they stump the devil and they worship God and my voice it used to be lifted against other people but now it's lifted to lift up the name of Jesus Christ I want to challenge every person I want our church this is one thing with our team we're praying for for the spirit of worship to capture our church because we agree even with our worship team that a lot of our people in our service and this is to say with the grief in our heart they have not tasted or experienced the beauty of worship how awesome it is and you may say but Vlad they don't sing my favorite songs last time I checked worship wasn't really about you it was about God but I don't really like that worship leader but it wasn't really about you it's about God it's does God like to be worshipped the question I have to ask when you come and you say but I don't really feel good Vlad I'm not feeling good you're not singing about your feelings you're singing about God's goodness you're saying God is good all the time you don't have to feel good to tell him that he is good amen it's like you, you don't have to be great to compliment somebody who is great it's about God it's not about us it's about worshiping him it's about acknowledging him I stumbled upon a verse in in the Old Testament that in second in second Kings chapter 17 verse 15 where God said we become what we worship it talks about the Israelites who worshiped idols it says and they became like those idols that convicted me so much the Bible says they became dumb they became mute they became deaf they became useless like the idols remember this you become what you worship if you worship God you become like God if you want to be more like him there's a key worship him because whatever you worship you become some of us we worship trucks some worship money why because the moment they talk about it their eyes light up their mouth goes in the church glory the moment you talk about business your hands go like this why because that's really your heart is engaged and and this is not to convict us but this is to remind us say hey it, it, it this is not because oh Vlad, if my style of worship is like that it's not always the style it's the spirit behind it your spirit of worship has to be expressive Bible always talks about expression of our worship you become what you worship and then God says that because they didn't worship him in 2nd Kings 17 25 it says that the lions came and devoured people I genuinely believe that worship shuts down many of the attacks of the devil but God gives us garment of praise instead of spirit of heaviness when you feel least likely to worship at that time worship got more than ever before when you feel least likely to give him praise when you even feel maybe so down you say Lord I can't even lift my hands because of so so many things that are going on you must understand the devil at that moment is putting a duct tape over your mouth over your hands he wants to tape you up once in our service I did it to Edder as an example where I taped him up completely every single thing and he couldn't move and he fell quickly be on, on the floor and that's what the devil does many times to church so that he can quiet me down quiet my hands bind my feet bind my heart and so that I can stand there but if, if in the midst of that I push through push through push through push through the more I worship that tape goes on the devil the Bible says that God uses the praises of babies to silence the avenger. 
God puts a duct tape on the devil when you open your mouth and if sometimes God looks at the adults and they say oh they're too spiritual God says let me get the babies and shut up the devil and silence him why because the babies because the babies they have the simplicity you saw what Ileana was doing in the morning here no theological degree she just knows one thing if there is a beat I gotta dance if there is a beat my hands have to go up and we understand if there is a God he's worthy to be praised and I will lift him and I will praise him can somebody say amen there's a story I'm gonna finish in this there's a story that I like so much I used to mention this story every month and a half or so uh, it, it really helps me during worship to get into praise and worship it's about an old mule it's how a guy had a well that was completely not used and he had an old mule he wanted to kill two birds with one stone wanted to get rid of the well and the mule so he had this magical idea to throw the mule in the well and cover it with dirt kill the mule get rid of the well and so that mule already you know how sometimes animals they already feel when you're trying to get rid of them and so the mule start feeling that already and he brought the mule and just dumped him into that well and took a shovel and started to throw dirt over the mule and the mule there in the well knowing he's rejected knowing no one wants him he's about to die he had two options one is give in and realize well my end has come they're trying to kill me what can I do two is what the mule did is instead of crying self-pity he would shake off that dirt and stand on it the more dirt came in he would shake it off and stand on it shake it off and stand on it until the owner threw so much dirt that the mule walked out from the well the worship is an opportunity when the devil threw stuff on you for seven days shake it off and stand on it so when you walk out from the service you walk out from your well you walk out from your situation you walk out from your problem can somebody say amen how many of us we're going to be worshipers how many say when they're going to worship i'm going to worship as well i'm going to worship with the angels i'm going to worship with 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 saints i'm going to worship with my family we're going to worship god in jesus name amen